Gordon and Guianeya, thank you so much for being here today. We're really glad you could spend a Sunday afternoon with us. Thank you, thank you. So yeah. One day I, I got an invitation to go to call the people in the Peace Corps, but I did go to Paraguay and played in the National Symphony. And, and you played French horn, I you said. I played said. French horn. Uh -huh. And eventually worked with a chorus. During that time, a lot of the my musical necessities, uh, I was able to uh, get them by a connection I had with a guy who was the director of the international school, uh, which was connected with the Disciples of Christ Church oh. in uh, there in Asuncion, and one of the more prestigious schools. And over the course of uh, our friendship, at one point he said, you know, I'd really like to start a school band. He said, and I have $600 extra. How, how many instruments could I get for that? And I said, <laughs> Two. maybe one. <laughs> and I said, however, I said, I have an idea. I'm, I'm coming up at the end of two years, on, and my parents are going to pay my way back to the United States for a, a Christmas visit. I said, how about if I see what I can do about drumming up some instruments for you and use that $600 to ship them? Uh -huh. And so, fortunately, I went back and my, my Christmas vacation was taken up with interviews and radio and television and newspaper articles about looking for instruments and basically it was from my hometown in Niles, Ohio, and extended out into Youngstown and Warren. But in, in two weeks, I was able to drum up about 60 instruments. That's awesome. And they're mostly broken down clarinets and trumpets and trombones and saxophones. I think we even got a one violin donation. And uh, so we ended, we ended up uh, send, getting the instruments all reconditioned by, by the local music fraternity. Uh -huh. They sent them out to Indianapolis, and then from Indianapolis, there they went to uh, Asuncion. And Boy, the power of what one person can do, huh? <laughs> and, and all of a sudden, I had, you know, I, I told them, I said, I only want kids that have A's and B's on their report cards. And all of a sudden, I had 200 kids. <laughs> And I had to pick 70. Oh dear. And, and I brought in two Paraguayan musicians who I thought were, would be the best for carrying the project on. And I'm, very shortly we had a, a band of 70 players that I worked with for the rest of my, my time there and trying to guide these guys with a method book. And after a year I left, I knew that they were ongoing and but the most gratifying part was when I went back in 2002 to conduct the orchestra. And uh, the third trumpet player came, came up and said, Are you Gordon Campbell? I said, Yes, yes. He said, Well, my goodness. He said, My father really needs to meet you. And I said, Well, why? He said, He's the conductor of the band that you started. He said, And at this point, oh. he said, At this point, they've been, he said, Three times we've been to Europe. Touring, he said, and we're doing a performance tomorrow afternoon. You have to come. And I said, oh, how Absolutely. awesome! And they had, by this point, they had a stage band or, or a, a rock band, a big band, and, and a concert band, and it just expanded uh, out. And uh, it, it it really gave me a, a feeling of satisfaction it's when I would I I went over to visit. They still had a few of the old original instruments kind of in a in a closet sort of relics of the time has passed <laughs> and, and so that that was sort of uh, well, well the whole the whole experience I think it was very interesting I mean because it shows you what people will do if you just kind of open up and say hey yes we, we need that and, and as a matter of fact, one of the ideas that we have in a kind of for a future help in Mexico is not so much the donation of instruments as the idea that there are, we think that there are a lot of retired music teachers 
that might really love to come and spend some months in Sinaloa as like a vacation Excellent and teach. Idea. And and that's part of part of where we're going with both Guinea and I with our plans for say the future of the Camerata Gordon Campbell and the community chorus to kind of see how we can get some of these people down here and let's say to continue giving. So many uh -huh. of them they finish uh, their their teaching career and they're retired mm -hmm. and and, uh, and maybe they don't have really enough money to be world travelers or anything like Some that. Of them. Just kind of as a side side line of this of my original Paraguay experience, we had when I was living in Mexico City, uh, another guy who I helped. He, he actually, be, I, I would say, he became the best bassoon player that Mexico had ever produced, and we helped him get first of all to a, a summer camp that I was teaching at, and then we got him a scholarship, first to Cleveland and then to Juilliard, wow. and things like that. But when he was first going to Cleveland, he right at that point he got married. And his wife said, Gordon, what am I going to do? I'm, I can't just go to Cleveland and be the wife and sit in, the, in, the, in my apartment all day waiting for him to come home. So, you know, I have, to, what can I do? And I, and I told her about my Paraguayan experience. I said, they need instruments in Oaxaca. Uh -huh. And I told her about this place in the hills of Oaxaca where they had... Uh, their own music school and their own instrument repair shop How but they cool. needed instruments desperately and I said so that's it two years later I'm in Oaxaca and I see this poster where the result of her work she, she collected 250 instruments and they donated the instruments to them in Rockefeller center in, in New York City. Watch what you say. <laughs> before, before they went to, to Cleveland. That's a lot. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just... Beautiful you know, story. Those kind of ideas that, uh, you know, you just think something could possibly happen and then, you know, it's almost... The thing I like about Mexico more than almost anything is the only... Your only real limit is your imagination yeah well and you, if you have a vision and put it out there you know it attracts the energy and it, it becomes possible it's it's just communicating it and being clear about it